Okay, so this is my Pi 4 4 gig, which I've been using remotely for a long time now. And uh, I've been trying to set it up in a slightly different way because I don't leave it on all the time. I did a video on how I could turn it on and off using the Tapo app, which turns on a smart plug and you can see the red light has come on. Uh, so I can turn that on from wherever I am as long as I've got an internet connection. And if I wait a few minutes for it to come on, I can then go to my remote desktop and I can log in. And this works great. But uh, what I've definitely found more recently is every now and then my remote IP address, that's the one supplied by my ISP, which in my case is Vodafone, actually changes. Uh, and it can change because I've reset my router or plugged in a different device. So that's where it's getting the internet connection from, that number changes. And I was trying to work out a way of getting it to tell me what that number was but remotely because if I'm trying to access it and I'm somewhere else uh, I haven't got local access to my Pi. So I was on my iPad I've just switched over to my MacBook the IP address has changed so you can see the IP address here I'll blur out some of it but uh, if I go to my Pi remotely the IP address is different. So this is my remote desktop and a few things I use it for uh, so if I wanted to look at my ring doorbell out the front it will show that and it will come up pretty much straight away. Um, but also I can have another tab open and I've got Motion iOS on a Pi Zero 2W. I've shown this in another video uh, and this is just pointed at my back garden at the moment. I've got access to that as well. Um, but also if I minimize the browser, uh, I've also got access to my NAS drive. So if I go go network. Uh, mine's a WD drive which lost support. I think I could have done an update but I left it as it was because I liked the way it was working. But if I wanted to go into my NAS drive I've got access to all of my files in here. Uh, and if I wanted to uh, send one to myself I could uh, attach it to an email, upload it to Dropbox or Google Drive or anything like that by using the web browser on the Pi. So I've got access to all the music I've ever owned uh, all my videos, photos, all sorts of things are all there via this little Pi. Um, but because I don't use it all the time, uh, when I finish using it, I can shut it down, I can turn off the Tapo plug and it's not using any extra power. I can do exactly the same to my Motion Eye camera as well. Uh, so if I want to switch that off, I have to log in, uh, but then I can go into this bit and then I can shut down from there. So this is my test machine. This is what I've been setting up uh, to do this process. Uh, and what it involves is installing Thunderbird and getting that to launch on boot. So if I shut this down and reboot, and while it's rebooting, I'm sending an email to myself, uh, to an email I've created for this device, uh, and the subject in it is Pi. So I'm just going to send that now. So you can see the machine has started up. What it's going to do now is launch Thunderbird. And it's just seen that it's got a new email. And what it does to that new email is it forwards that email to my normal email address. So if I look at my emails on my iPad, it's just come in. Now on any device, if I access my Gmail, the email has come in. You can see it says 13 minutes ago. Now we need to show the original of this message. So if we press the three dots on the right hand side here uh, and we get an option to show original. And that shows all the information. Uh, now on this page, if I do a find in page, so I press the share icon and find in page. You can do this on an Android device. I can do this on my iPhone. Uh, you're just searching within the page. Search for REC, uh, which is for received. And I'm going to scroll through these and it's here, received from, and then it's got my local IP address and then it's got my remote IP address. So that's the bit I need to copy. That's my remote IP address. So I'm going to copy that. I can go to my remote desktop and I can add that information into here and save that. Now if I click on that one, you can see it offers to connect and I can hit connect and I'm logged back in. Now others may have already done this before and be wondering why I'm using this method because there are so many GitHubs and so many videos showing exactly how to do this. Well, everything I've tried hasn't worked. Now, whether that's because I'm using 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS and most of the old guides uh, are on Buster, not Bullseye, the latest version. Also, Google has changed the way they deal with uh, a less secure 
activities on a, on a Gmail account. And so that seems to have blocked lots of other things as well. So I think this method should support more operating systems, but also should be able to go beyond uh, a major Linux update uh, in the future. I'm hoping so anyway. But uh, yeah, so far so good. It's been working for me. So let's show you how I did it. So first up, I'm going to use PyApps. Uh, if you don't know how to install PyApps, I've got a separate video on that. Uh, so let's just launch that and communication and Thunderbird and install that. Okay, that's all done. Uh, let's just see that it launches fine. So it'll be under internet and Thunderbird. I didn't mention before, but I also use, uh, so if I'm downloading a large file or a torrent file, I'll use this system and I can start it if I'm at work or I'm out and about and I think, oh, I'd like to download that. I can start it at home and then when I get home, it's on, on the network and I can just transfer it to any device I want. So you can use any email service for this method uh, because it's Thunderbird, it should support pretty much everything. Oh, I'm going to use Gmail and it's raining outside if you wonder what the noise is. So I put my email and password in, hit continue and it works out that it's Google and just does it. So I just hit done. So then we have to just follow the steps for Google and log in again and allow it. Okay, that's all set up. And let's go to the hamburger menu, account settings, server settings, and I change this to check every minute and I've left check for new messages at startup, which is really the main reason I'm gonna use it. Obviously, you don't need to keep running this, so once you've got your IP address, uh, you can just close it down. Then we need to go back to the hamburger menu and go to tools, message filters, new. So I'll call this pi forward email. I'm gonna uncheck manually run. So match the following. Subject contains pi, perform these actions, forward message to, and I'm gonna put in my normal email address. That's another Gmail address, but it's the one I use uh, for my standard, not my, not my YouTube one, my standard one, and hit okay. Now we can close this down, and we need to open a terminal, and we need to type this in, which is basically gonna get us to the section where we're gonna auto start an app or a program. So you can see there's already things on here and I need to paste in Thunderbird. So at Thunderbird, all lowercase. Control X and yes to save it and enter. So that's done now. What should happen now, if I restart my Pi, it should automatically start up Thunderbird and check for emails. So let's see if it does that. So let's hit reboot. Okay, and that's started up. And let's see if it launches the email. There you go. So the email has started up as well. So I'm just going to send an email again. So to the email address that's only associated with this Pi uh, and the subject is Pi. So it will pick that up. It's usually pretty quick. Yeah, it's come up straight away. And then if I check by refreshing on here, that's come up with the email straight away. So really, really quick that this happens. And we're using the same method before. So checking it in a web browser and uh, looking for that IP address and then changing it if it needs changing. But if you don't need it, you can just close down Thunderbird and we're up and running as a normal remote desktop. And I don't use this uh, with the display. I just have this plugged in by my TV, but with no HDMI connection. Uh, I can plug in those little adapters to give it better GPU support, but Raspberry Pi OS uses very little GPU support anyway. So I tend to find it's not needed on this particular OS. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.